In this video, we'll take a look at uh, how to solve polynomial inequalities. And in the first example, ask to solve each of the following and graph the solution on a number line. And so the uh, first one says um, this would be called a linear inequality because it's uh, x just to the power of 1. So x plus 4 is less than negative 2, less than or equal to negative 2. So we want to isolate the x, so we want to get rid of the 4. So we would subtract 4 from both sides. And so that adds to 0, which gives us just x on the left. And negative 2 minus 4 would be negative 6. So we have x is less than or equal to negative 6. Now less than or equal to means below, and but also including. So the equal to signs means we include the number negative 6 and put a nice solid dot there and shade towards the left, which means below on the number line. So that's how you would graph this solution on a number line. The next one, another linear inequality. So we want to isolate the x, so we want to get rid of this negative 2. So we would add 2 to both sides first. And so we would just be left with negative 3x is less than, and this would add to 12. Now to isolate the x, we would divide out the negative 3. So these negative 3's divide out, and we're just left with x on the left. And 12 divided by negative 3 would be negative 4. Now, when you divide an inequality by a negative, it switches the direction. Notice this was less than, and now it's greater than. Now, if you've never seen that before, here's a little example of why you do that. So let's say we had the, uh, the numbers 2. 2 is less than 7. Okay, that's a true statement. 2 is less than 7. If we multiply both sides of this by negative 1, or divide by negative 1, for example, we would get negative 2 on the left and negative 7 on the right. And we can no longer put a less than there because, see, negative 2 is actually greater than negative 7. 2 is less than 7, but negative 2 is greater than negative 7. And so, the inequality changes direction. So that's an example of why you, you change the direction when you multiply or divide by a negative. So x is greater than negative 4. Now, there's notice there's no equal to here. So it means we don't shade in the negative 4. We put an open circle there. And greater than means we shade towards the right, which means above negative 4. So it doesn't include negative 4, but just numbers to the right of negative 4. For, for example, negative 3.99 is a number that's to the right of negative 4 and would be bigger than negative 4. On to the second example, we're asked to solve uh, x squared minus 16 is greater than 0. And so this is the first of a few examples that uh, I'm going to show using some factoring because they're quadratic or cubic or, or higher. And so we're going to uh, factor the x squared minus 16. And so that's the difference of two squares. This is a quadratic example. And so that will factor into x plus 4 and x minus 4. So if you set each of these to 0, we get roots or x-intercepts of negative 4 and 4. So if we were to graph y equals x squared minus 16, it would go through the x-axis at negative 4 and at positive 4. And so, and this is my number line here, and so I'll put a negative 4 and a 4 here, and those two numbers, those two intercepts or roots, divide the number line into three intervals. So below negative 4, And then between negative 4 and 4, which would be this interval, and then above 4, which would be x is greater than 4. So those are the three intervals. And what we're going to do on the uh, left side here is we're going to place the factors x plus 4 and x minus 4, and then also the product of them, because the x squared minus 16 is the product of those two factors. And what we're going to use this table for is to check the values, actually, not necessarily the values, just the sign, whether it's positive or negative. And then we use that to determine where x squared minus 16 is greater than 0. So if you consider the x minus 4 factor, if you're talking about numbers below negative 4, like for example, negative 7, and negative 7 is below negative 4. If we put a negative 7 in here and subtract 4 from it, you get negative 11. And so we don't really, not really, really worry, worried about the 11 part, just the fact that it's negative. And so we put that same negative 7 or any other number below negative 4 in place of x here. Negative 7, for example, plus 4 is still negative, so we put a negative there.
Now the whole uh, x squared minus 16 um, quadratic is the equal to the product of these two factors. So it's the product of these two negatives. And so a negative and a negative multiply to a positive, and so we'll put a positive here. So below negative 4, this positive means below negative 4 that the graph would be positive, had positive y values or function values. So now we're going to test between negative 4 and 4. So for example, 0 is a good number to use. If we put 0 here in place of x, 0 minus 4 is negative. But for the next one, 0 plus 4 is positive. So we have a positive here. And this product is the product of a negative and a positive, which would of course be negative. So where x is greater than 4, for example 5, 5 minus 4 would be positive and 5 plus 4 is also positive and so a positive times a positive is a positive. Now we're looking for where this function is greater than 0 so down here on the the line that shows the the value of the the sign of the whole function we're looking for the positives because it's greater than 0. So the solutions would be x is less than negative 4 and this one would correspond to x is greater than positive 4. So the numbers are either below negative 4 or above positive 4. And so we write the solution like this. x is less than negative 4 or x is greater than 4. Those are the two intervals. And how we would graph that is like this. So that's less than negative 4. And this would be greater than positive 4. Notice again there's no equal to here. It's just greater than. And so we don't shade in the 4 and negative 4 just below negative 4 and above positive 4. For example number 3, we are asked to solve this cubic inequality, x cubed plus 4x squared plus x minus 6 is uh, less than or equal to 0. Notice there's an equal to sign here. So we need to factor this to find where it's, what its x-intercepts are. So let's put the 1, 4, 1, negative 6 here. And I'm going to use synthetic division to factor this. If you want to use long division, you can. And so we would, uh, we would try factors of negative 6, uh, plus or minus 1, 2, 3, or 6. So there's actually, I guess it would be 8 different numbers you could potentially try. And so I'm going to use positive 1 here. So I'll bring this 1 down, and 1 times 1 would be 1. 4 and 1 add to 5. 5 times that 1 would be a 5 here, so 1 and 5 add to 6. And 6 times 1 would be 6, and so we add those and get a remainder of 0. Okay, so x minus 1 would be a factor. Now if you don't have um, graphing technology to find those roots a little faster, you're really just doing trial and error. As I said, there's, there's 8 different possible roots of that negative 6, um, so you just keep on going until you find one. So 1 worked, so now we're basically... Um, uh, we're going to factor the, uh, the what's remaining. This is really x squared plus 5x plus 6. I'm going to do another synthetic division, although I could just use just normal quadratic factoring too. And so negative 2 actually works here as well. So we bring the 1 down again. And negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. This adds to positive 3. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. And once again, we're going to get a remainder of 0. So the factors are x minus 1, x plus 2, and this would be 1x plus 3 or x plus 3. So there's the three factors, x minus 1, x plus 2, and 1, 3 means 1x plus 3 or x plus 3. So let's put those three numbers. Uh, so 1x intercept would be negative 3, so we'll put that to the far left, and then negative 2 from this one, and then positive 1 in this one. So that's how they would go in order from left to right. So in the table, this is negative 3, this is negative 2, and this is positive 1. And so if we write out the intervals, we would have below negative 3, between negative 3 and negative 2, between negative 2 and positive 1, and then greater than 1. x is greater than 1. And so we'll put the three factors on the left side here, and then the product of the three of them. And same as the last example, we're going to check the signs of these in these four intervals. So below negative 3, like just choose a number below negative 3, like negative 10, for example. If I put negative 10 in place of x here and subtract 1, or add 2, or add 3, in all those cases, it's negative. So all three of these are negative. Now, uh, the whole function, the cubic function, is a product of these three negative factors. So a negative times a negative times a negative would be a negative. So it starts out on this interval 
to have a negative function value or y value. So now we move to the interval between negative 3 and negative 2, like for example, negative 2.5. If you put that in place of x, negative 2.5 and subtract 1, you get negative. Negative 2.5 plus 2 is still just slightly negative, but negative 2.5 plus 3 is actually turned to be positive. What you'll often find is just, you'll, if, as long as you put this in order, you'll, you'll get uh, each column to increasingly get uh, positive values. Well, I guess if it, that, that is if it's a positive uh, cubic function. So we have a plus there, and then this is the product of two negatives and a positive. Um, two negatives, any even number of negatives would multiply to a positive, so the function is turned to be a positive between negative 3 and negative 2. Now, between negative 2 and 1, uh, for example, 0 is a good number to check. 0 minus 1 would uh, still be negative, but 0 plus 2 would be positive, as would 0 plus 3. So this is the product of two positives and one negative, so negative, with only one negative. So where x is greater than 1, for example, uh, 7. Uh, 7 minus 1, 7 plus 2, and 7 plus 3 are all positive, so these are all positive, and then the whole function is positive. Now we're looking for whether this cubic function is less than or equal to 0. So less than or equal to 0 means we're looking for the negatives. So that interval, and here's a negative which corresponds to the negative 2 to positive 1 interval. And so we would write our solution like this. Uh, x is either less than, now notice there's an equal to sign here, so we wouldn't just say less than negative 3, it would be less than or equal to, because that's there, and then between negative 2 and 1, we also include the negative 2 and 1, um, because the fact that there's a, a, an equal to sign here. So that's what the solution looks like. If we were to graph it, x is less than negative 3, we shade in the, the, the negative 3, and then go towards the left. And then negative 2 to 1 would be numbers between negative 2 and positive 1, including the negative 2 and positive 1. So that's what the shading would look like on a number line. One last example, uh, number 4 here, asked to solve this quartic inequality. So same idea. Uh, I'm going to factor this um, quartic, and then because we need the x-intercepts in, uh, in order to know how to set up our table. So 1, 4, negative 7, negative 34, negative 24 across the top. And again, you would try factors of negative 24. It has lots of factors. So if you're doing this by trial and error, it might take you a little while to find ones with remainders of 0. But uh, 3 does work. So bring the 1 down, and 3 times 1 would be a 3. 4 and 3 add to 7, and multiply that by the 3 to get uh, positive 21. Add here, and you get 14. 14 times 3 would be 42. And then we add again to get uh, positive 8. And uh, 3 times 8 is 24. Uh, those are opposites, so they add to 0. So uh, x minus 3 is a factor. So let's do another division. We've only, there's four numbers here, so we've still got a cubic here. Be 1x cubed plus 7x squared plus 14x plus 8. So uh, negative 1 is, a, is another factor, negative 24, that actually does work here. So you bring the 1 down, and negative 1 times 1 would be a negative 1. Add to the 7, we get 6. Uh, 6 times negative 1 would be a negative 6 here. Add to the 14 to get us 8. And 8 times negative 1 is negative 8. Again, they're opposites, just like the 24s were. And so we get a remainder of 0. So x, plus, uh, x minus 3, x plus 1 are both factors. And then the 1, 6, 8 would mean x squared plus 6x plus 8 is the other factor. Now we want to factor that. So it's um, a quadratic with a coefficient of 1 for the x squared. So we can factor it fairly quickly by looking for two numbers that add to 6 and multiply to 8. And so that would be 2 and 4. So x plus 2 and x plus 4 would be factors of this x squared plus 6x plus 8. And so now this is completely factored. Now the the roots... Uh, our x-intercepts would be negative 4, negative 2, negative 1, and then positive 3. And I'm writing them in that order just because that's how you write them in order from left to right. Negative 4 is the lowest root here. Then we have negative 2, negative 1 is a little bit higher than it, and then of course the positive 3 would be on the right side. So in our table, uh, this line, now I, I kind of ran out of room on this page a little bit, so um, We'll think of the top here as a number line. It's not actually to scale, 
but that is negative 4, that will be negative 2, that will be negative 1, and this would be 3. And so when we write out the um, intervals below negative 4, between negative 4 and negative 2, between negative 2 and negative 1, from negative 1 to positive 3, and then greater than 3 are the 5 intervals that those 4 numbers break the number line into. And so let's put all these factors, uh, and of course the, uh, the product of all of them on the bottom, uh, on the, the left side of the table here. And so we'll check each of these below negative 4. So just pick a number below negative 4, like negative 10. Negative 10 plus 4, negative 10 plus 2, negative 10 plus 1, and negative 10 minus 3. Those are all negative. So, and of course, this is the product now of four negatives, which would be positive. Remember, an even number of negatives multiplies to a positive. So now we check uh, some number between negative 4 and negative 2, like negative 3, for example. If we put negative 3 in here, negative 3 plus 4 has become positive. So we have a positive there. But if we put negative 3 here, here, or here, when you add 2 to it, add 1 to negative 3, or negative 3 minus 3 is still negative. So all three of those are negative. So the uh, function here is the product of a positive and three negatives. So odd number of negatives, it's going to be negative. So now we go between negative 2 and negative 1. And, and you can use a decimal like negative uh, 1.5, for example. Negative 1.5 plus 4 is positive. Negative 1.5 plus 2, see this is the factor that's actually turned to be uh, positive now. Negative 1.5 plus 1 is still negative, and negative 1.5 minus 3 is, is still negative as well. So, product of two positives and two negatives, two negatives, that's the important thing here. Uh, it doesn't really matter how many positives, would be a positive. So it's a switch sign. So one, well, actually two more intervals to check. So negative one to three, uh, zero is a convenient number to check here. So zero plus four, zero plus two, and zero plus one, those are all positive. But zero minus three is still negative. So we have one negative here, and so this one's still negative. And then a number larger than 3, like for example, 9. Uh, 9 plus 4, 9 plus 2, 9 plus 1, 9 minus 3. Those are all positive. And so the function is positive. I put one last plus here with a bounce. And so now we're looking for whether this quartic function is less than or equal to 0. So less than or equal to implies negatives, Okay, below 0. So the solution would be this interval and this interval. The only thing that changed a little bit is because it's, there's a less than or equal to, we need to put less than or equal to's on all of these. So this is how we write the solution. Uh, it's numbers from negative 4 to negative 2 and negative 1 to negative 3. What that means graphically, and I didn't show this in the other examples, but uh, in this one, uh, I graph this cube, uh, quartic function. And you see, we're looking for where it's less than or equal to 0. Well, that would actually, you see, the scale on the x-axis is 1 here. So if we go 1, 2, 3, 4, you see from negative 4 to negative 2, that would be negative 4 there and negative 2 there, it's below the uh, y x-axis, sorry. And then also from negative 1 to 3, see, that's where x is uh, negative 1. And that's where x is positive 3. So the function is negative or below the x-axis, negative y values uh, between those. So that's what it looks like graphically. Now, uh, I kind of out, ran out of uh, room here again for my number line. But um, to graph negative 4 to negative 2, uh, let's pretend this is a number line. So we would uh, sketch from negative 4 to negative 2 and including those, again, because of the equality. And then same from uh, negative 1 to positive 3. So that's what it would look like on a number line. And that's the end of the video.